Let's see my cat. Well, hi, South Park Church. I'm back again for the third day in a row now uh, with LZ, uh, the director okay. of care, I uh, not care, a uh, director of Co connections and young adults, <laughs> though she is caring for quite a many people in her home right now. So how are you today, LZ? I am good, tired, but good, um, full of caffeine. So hanging in there. That'll, that'll help keep you going for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about your role at South Park? So I have two roles. Um, I play at the same time. Um, one of my roles is the director of connections. So it's my job to help people, as the title says, uh, get connected to church life, whether it be people who have been coming and are new attenders and need to figure out what does it look like to get connected and plugged in to small groups, to different places to build relationships, um, to become members. And even for people who have maybe come for a little while, if they want to get more connected to the community and figure out how to build relationships, one of the my favorite things to do is to connect people, not to me, but to connect people to each other. Yeah, that's all. You're really good at it too. You really are. I don't know. <laughs> Hi, Taryn. Uh, you've done an amazing job, no, LZ, you really have. Uh, so now, like, you're so used to connecting people at um, at church. So yes. what's it like to try to do that when none of us can be there? You have we all have to do it from home. What what's that so, like? It's actually been interesting because it's forced some intentionality. Um, not that there wasn't intentionality before, um, but it's been actually really cool to reach out to some people who are new to South Park Church and figure out, can we get them connected to a small group? Can we help them figure out when live streaming is happening, um, when different worship is happening? And so we've had a lot of connection points there. Um, and it's also looked like getting people who maybe have been going to our church for a long time and a big thank you to like a lot of our elders and lay leaders who've been reaching out to new families and finding prayer requests. Um, so connecting people to each other just looks a little different. A lot of times it might even come through me connecting to people who need to hear from each other at the church. So that connection's part of my job looks a little bit different. Um, but I still get to connect people, so I don't have to stop doing what I love. And there's two new small groups, right, on Wednesday nights or even more? Um, right now, there's two new small groups that have finally started up. Um, one is a couple small group that we... Funnily enough, we're trying to get off the ground for a while, but it didn't um, in real time, but people were able to connect virtually. So that was finally able to happen. And then there's another group meeting tonight of women. Um, there's eight of us meeting together for prayer. And this is a plug, if you're not plugged into it yet, you can email me if you want to, if you want to join us, because this will be our second week meeting together. So that's been really, really cool. And it's not just our group, it's a lot of other small groups that I'm watching meet together too, that yeah, aren't new, so but connecting. They're using Zoom, right? The app Zoom for the most part? Yes, nearly all of our small group leaders are figuring out how to how to use Zoom. And um, you didn't ask me this yet, but one of the cool things <laughs> have been, um, I was just talking to Bill and Don Phillips yesterday down in Florida, and usually they can't come to their small group. And what's been really cool is they've been zooming in with their small group and have been able to connect and pray with them in a way that is not normally afforded to them at this point in the year. So there's some extra connections happening. That yeah, all over. That's one example. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. And your other part of your role is young adults. So I think that a lot of us really take for granted that young adults, they're so used to technology and being connected digitally that I think people are taking for granted how hard this is for them and that they really do desire face-to-face -face contact. They don't always want to be staring down at their phones. So tell us, talk for them. Tell us about the young adults, how they're connecting now and what you want to see happen when this is all done. So first of all, I, I like that you say that. Um, Young adults, though technologically savvy, um, actually do like being around each other. It's um, so much. <laughs> so much. And actually, doing the Zoom thing has been um, interesting and trying for us as well. Um, something for anybody who's caring for a young adult right now to think about the fact, particularly the college students, there's a lot of senses. There's a sense of loss in not getting to do the things um, that they'd normally get to do, particularly our seniors. 
they're not getting to finish up the milestones in the way that they had hoped and they had imagined with their groups of friends. Um, but the cool see that I, thing that I see happening in the young adults is prayer texts have started and prayer chains have started and Zoom conversations are happening not only with me, um, there's two official young adult Zoom groups plus um, several other places the young adults get together. Um, they go, they check in on people. A lot of them do social distance walks yeah. where they'll just come and I've had a couple of them just visit my house uh, from the porch. And the biggest thing that I've seen happen is the way that the young adults choose to care for each other and choose to ch care for the community. They've all wanted to know how they could step up and how they can live on mission. So. Don't ignore 18 to 30 year olds. They they really wanna step up and serve and know what it means to be an example to their friends of following Jesus by practicing social distancing too at this time. So I'm hoping that the prayer change that have started and the ways that we've been able to connect with those who um, maybe aren't here, like Brooke out in Thailand and Brendan and Alex and Mike um, all over the all over the place that we'll still be able to meet, be more intentional in praying with each other week in and week out um, for those that aren't regularly with us as well. And I think that they're probably maybe the group that's going to be able to continue where they started here the most. Like they're going mm -hmm. to continue doing what they're already doing while they still can meet with each other once this is all over. And one of the benefits, it is really hard to think about the college students that we're expecting to go back after spring break and they're back home living in their parents' house or living with, you know, other family. Um, but one of the blessings is that they do get to probably engage more than they would have if they were back at school. That's so true. yeah, it's neat to have them back at the family and I hope they're feeling loved yeah. and home. Yeah. And I'm not used to actually getting to connect with the college students at such an intense level as I am able to now which is another really amazing thing to see how the college community actually, so many of them continue to spur on one another to follow Christ in ways that I hadn't even heard about. So some of it was just becoming more aware of the ways that our young people are choosing to follow Christ in their own communities. Some of them are continuing to meet with the Bible studies they had back at school. And to hear that they can't come to our phone conversation because they have another Bible study to go to that is in the community they're at during the year. I'm not mad about that. It's more like, praise God that you have other commitments to read scripture and to, and to walk with God like that. So for me, it's been eye-opening just to see how much they're pursuing God. Absolutely. That is an inspiration for all of us. Yeah, they are. They, they inspire me and convict me. I'm like, oh, you guys are really <laughs> we're going for it. I needed to take it up a notch, so. <laughs> and so, you know, you do a lot. I, I think that people know that, but you clearly do a lot. So what's it like now personally working from home with your little kiddos, husband home or away at a busy job? What's yeah. it like for you right now? So you guys can't see this um, too much, but I'll give Facebook a little insight into where I'm working. Um, that is a crib. <laughs> okay, so this is, I'm learning the term Zoom room. I learned it from Seth Meyers. This is the little space in my house so you, you can't see the rest, <laughs> so you can't see the rest of the house. Um, but I will say it's it's been challenging and part of the reason I'm more tired than I, you know, you think work from home, of course it's less tiring and let's do our projects. <laughs> But for me, Luke is still working. My husband's a grocery store manager, if you guys don't know him. Um, so he's still working 50 or 60 hours a week. And normally we have about five to six different people in our support system that watch the children. And now we're down to zero. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been really, really interesting um, in figuring out how to work in pockets of time, how to work when the kids go down. Um, how to teach Michael that when the door is locked, mom's probably on a meeting, so please don't run in naked. Um, <laughs> so it, it it has been a challenge, but it, at the same time, um, I've seen I've seen God work, but um, it's not quite the focus level that I have if I'm in my office and it's quiet. And I miss all of you. Yeah. I miss Let's say hi to some of those people. Shannon's here. Alberta's here. Hi. Oh, I'm not on Facebook at the same time. Okay. Hi, Shannon. Oh, and Shannon yeah. stopped yesterday and brought me Duncan. Oh, how sweet. Yeah. That's super sweet. See, they're caring. Yes. They like to care. Yes. Um, but and I do want to give a big shout out to Luke because um, he's an essential worker in so many ways. 
besides just being out there every day, like he's really providing. And so thank you so much, Luke, for being who you are and doing the job that you're doing. And I hope that yep. he feels prayed for and um, respected and loved. And he does. It's been cool to feel how our community has come behind us um, with prayer and love and the amazing thing is as alone as we might feel or stressed as we might feel, I've never seen God's people show me in a more tangible way how loved we are and that there is a community of believers and a cloud of witnesses praying for us and praying not only for our family, but so many of you who go out there um, and work every single day, whether it be police officers or firefighters or hospital workers or grocery workers. And I know the list is even bigger than that. So thank you to all of you who are continuing to do that even in our own community. Yeah, I, I echo those words. Yeah. So thanks for joining us today, LZ. She did this like last minute too. I said, sent her a little text said, hey, come and talk to me on Facebook. And she said, okay. So as soon as Luke shows me how to, how to make it work. <laughs> yeah, thanks Luke for knowing how to make computers work besides all the other things he does. Um, so anyway, it's great to have all of you join us. And if you're joining us after the fact, please leave us a comment. We'll make sure to reply to them. And again, last, last little plug, if you wanna get involved or if you're not involved, in small groups of any sort, or you're interested in more, you can email any question, LZ. really. <laughs> yep, any question. She'll pretty much know the answer to it. So you can go ahead and send her an email, and she'd love to connect <laughs> with you. So right. thanks, Elsie. Have a great day. Right, bye. You can hear the children waking up. Goodbye, everybody. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay.